Hey there folks, Rel here, and welcome to another episode of YouTube Proper, a series dedicated to helping you grow your channel or get you started on the right foot if you're new to it all. Today we'll be talking about sharing your content, which is a topic mentioned in the Finding Subscribers episode and that's still completely relevant, but I wanted to flesh out the concept here a little bit more. There are a lot of right ways to share content and even more wrong ways or just less effective ways and knowing when and where to do that is an important part of growing your channel. When I say content, at least for the purposes of this video, we're talking about not just your videos, but your threads, your posts, your comments that you create on social sites, and other people's videos as well. Too often in this digital age, sharing is thought of as a megaphone, where we just shout out as much information and promotion as we can, hoping to be heard. But when all you do is shout, you only deafen your audience. The word share itself implies that you're handing out pieces of something that belongs to you, and if what you decide to share has any value, then you wouldn't just be throwing it out at random people, right? Now obviously, digital media doesn't diminish when you share it, but a more generous, more conscious mindset of giving and taking should be considered when doing so. That said, sharing is done properly when it's the right content to the right audience at the right time and all of these factors go hand in hand. Right content is the content you feel the audience will be interested in. Right audience changes depending on the type of content and the venue on which you share it. And right time is about getting the appropriate times of day, how often you put out content, and working with current events that can increase or decrease viewership. In regards to content, the majority of subscribers here follow this channel for Planetside 2 content, while another subset of them enjoy the Thoughts on Better Gaming series, even though they no longer play Planetside 2. Knowing this, the content that I share with my audience is going to be either Planetside 2 related or information regarding psychology or sociology as it relates to gaming and other topics that are in the same vein. Even so, content generation means nothing if you don't have a means to syndicate it. It's worthwhile to create a Twitter, a Facebook, and a Google Plus page for your content, those are the three big ones, because YouTube's subscriber box won't always show your videos, and they can also be overshadowed by subscriptions to other channels. When you create a Twitter account, it should be more about you as an individual. A Facebook page is more of a page-like entity that's better at holding content, and a Google Plus page is kind of somewhere in between, because it works in tandem with your YouTube page but all of which are platforms for discussion. It's also worthwhile to have a Reddit account and subscribe to the subreddit of your game, as well as general topics that are interesting or helpful to you. I subscribe to the Planetside subreddit, the PS2 Mentor subreddit, the Harasser subreddit, my servers subreddit, and I even have my own subreddit, which acts as a place for people to comment on videos outside of YouTube because some people are iffy about what Google Plus does with your personal information. And this sounds like a lot, it completely is, but it's also very useful. Not necessary, but useful. I discover a lot of videos from the community through Reddit and Twitter. So when I see something that I think is not only relevant to my subscriber base, but is something I think they'll also enjoy, I give it a thumbs up, I'll comment on it, and I'll possibly add it to a playlist. Because I know that some portion of my audience will be led to those videos when I do so. And I personally believe that sharing the content of others is an important part of helping build the community. Too many channels tend to neglect this. They'll keep to themselves, or they'll only look out for themselves, or they'll view other channels as competition that they shouldn't be condoning or supporting, and if that's the way you try to grow, it's going to be a long, hard, depressing journey, and then you're going to quit. How much you gain correlates to how much you can give, not just on YouTube, but in real life as well. So you should be looking for opportunities to give, not push, but give or share, and social media is a great way to do that. When someone is asking a question or advice on Twitter or Reddit or Google+, I can post a reply or send them a message that says, hey, I have a video here that talks about that, and if you're interested, you can check it out. Then I'll give them the link, maybe they'll find it helpful, maybe they won't, but it's much more personal, and it's much more respectful than just spamming your links everywhere. That's not to say that you shouldn't release your content into the world, though. Just don't be that guy or that gal who pushes out every crappy video that they make hoping to scrape together some views, because that's not what it's about. And I guess this is where we start talking about audience. Your YouTube, your Twitter, your Google Plus and Facebook pages, those are all your venues. 
People subscribe to them or follow you on them because they have an interest in what you're offering. On Reddit or the official forums for your game, those people may not. The Planetside 2 subreddit, for example, is primarily an audience of veteran players. They're more interested in discussion or complaining or drama or humor rather than tips and tricks or guides or walkthroughs. So knowing that, when you share your content through one of those mediums, you need to do so in a certain manner. If you have a guide or a walkthrough or a tips or tricks video that you'd like to post there, you can say, hey, I'm a new channel, I'd like some help creating better videos, I'm interested in any feedback that you guys can offer, thank you so much for taking the time. And then you post your link. If you say, you know, haha, I bet you didn't know this, or look at this cool thing you can do, you'll probably get a response back that says something like, we already know that, it's been around for years now, you're a noob, go away, downvote, 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 and you'll start building a reputation for being that guy who just shares stuff that nobody cares about. This is obviously just an example, but knowing the culture of the audience you're sharing with is important, and it's going to impact how the message is perceived. Some good places to look for more audiences are, again, the game subreddit and peripheral subreddits, but also the official forums, Facebook groups, Google Plus circles and groups and pages or whatever they're calling them nowadays, and Twitter hashtags are also a good way to tailor your content to a certain audience. For example, when I post something about Planetside 2, be it that I put out a new video that I want people to see, or I found a cool piece of fan art, or some information worth sharing, I'll tag it hashtag Planetside2. This lets people read the tweet, know that it relates to Planetside2 right at a glance, and it'll also allow people who follow the Planetside2 hashtag see your tweet. You can also go so far as to tag the usernames of people who are relevant to that community. So to me, about Planetside2 would be at RelPlays, but it can also get really annoying when you're just trying to get me to watch something. Rarely is it a genuine, hey, I think you or your subscribers will enjoy this, and it's usually more of a look at me, look at me, retweet, thumbs up, please, favorite, whatever. And honestly, I perceive that as disrespectful, so a lot of times I'll just ignore it. The last thing we'll talk about is timing. How often you release a video, and what day and time you release it, will impact the kind of viewership that you get. This is something for you to figure out based on where the majority of your audience is coming from and what day it is. A quick Google search gave me a Lifehacker article that's been linked in the video description below along with a whole bunch of other links that you can check out, but it recommends that Thursdays through Sundays are the best times to post content because people's interest in work starts to wane toward the end of the week. And for time slots with all the times in Eastern Standard, they say that Monday through Wednesday, 2 to 4 p.m., Thursday through Friday, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m., and Saturday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Based on personal testing though, I do tend to get the most views anywhere from 1pm to 5pm with a heavy skew toward 4pm to 5pm EST. Keep in mind though that I am an American on the East Coast with the majority of my views coming from America, though Germany and the United Kingdom are pretty high up there as well. Nowadays I do tend to try and release videos around 2pm to 4pm depending on the time of day, but I'm more than certain that I have a lot of room for improvement. If you're curious about figuring out some of this stuff for yourself, you can open up your YouTube Analytics dashboard, and then you check out the Demographics tab along with the Real-Time tab, as well as some of the other options available. When it comes to posting tweets, Facebook, and Google Plus messages, I do tend to use an app called Buffer, and Buffer is an app that schedules posts based on when you tend to get the most engagement from those social media channels. So if I have something interesting that I'd like to share through social media, but it isn't in need of immediate posting, then I'll just plug it into Buffer, and then I'll let it syndicate that content whenever it feels like it. So you could technically use this app to figure out when you should release videos as well, but trial and error is probably the better way to do it, as your YouTube channel is going to have a much larger following and more data points, rather than the specific and smaller groups on your various social media channels. Last thing that I want to talk about as far as timing goes is current events. Now if you know that the Reddit community is having an emotional meltdown over some changes that have taken place in your favorite game, then now is probably not a good time to post your unrelated video there because it's more than likely to get overlooked. Likewise, if you can take advantage of the current atmosphere by putting out a video that adds to the discussion, then you're more likely to get more viewership. Knowing the temperament of the community comes from actually being a part of that community, and that's something that you should strive to do regardless of which game you're playing. People have a pretty good feel for when you're trying to promote yourself, and when you're genuinely trying to share content. 
And despite the internet oftentimes being a very pessimistic place, worthwhile content can help alter the negative perceptions and in the long run will make your channel more successful. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any tips or pet peeves or anything that you'd like to discuss regarding the development of your channel, questions are cool too, you can do that in the comments section down below. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.